Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show hosted by a French professor who hasn't done a new show in over a week. I banked some episodes, but if you're even vaguely aware of this channel, you'll know I just gave birth to a... Well, I didn't give birth <laughs> to a daughter. My wife gave birth to a daughter, and that was last week. I'm very, very happy, very, very excited. And the entire time, basically, that my child was being born, that I was taking care of that child in the very, very first hours of her life, I would often have my headphones in listening to this album by The Alchemist and Rock Marciano, Elephant Man's Bones. So first of all, I need a proviso. So I've done this channel for a few years, and uh, you know, definitely underground hip-hop has been one of the areas I'm most interested in studying because I grew up on hip-hop and I love it, and there's all these great things happening. And somehow, <laughs> I've completely missed Rock Marciano. Like, like, I get so many comments, Sky, you gotta review, you know, Mount Marcy, you gotta review, I don't know, Marcialago, I don't even know the names of all of his albums, but I do know that everyone sort of tells me that, like, he's the guy. You know, like, if Sunez is a, a hip-hop scholar and writer who termed this the invisible renaissance, what's happening in underground hip-hop, and if there is an invisible renaissance, apparently, Rock Marciano is the, uh, is the Masaccio. He's not the Raphael, the Michelangelo, but he's the guy who really, like, started it. You know, really created this whole thing, which I am enjoying as much as I'm enjoying anything else in this weird adventure I've had in my 40s of learning about new music. So, let's just sort of, like, understand that, that I, I am coming to you in profound ignorance. I like to say that my ignorance is profound, and that's true. <laughs> it's very deep and meaningful ignorance of Rock Marciano's music. Now, I know The Alchemist quite well because he, ap he apparently releases, I think if we were trying to figure out like just by songs, I think he releases on average four songs a day, every day for the past four years. Um, so I love his work. And, and so we have this, these two things coming together, you know, so, so I, I managed to find, I don't know, some bootleg copy of the album on YouTube or something. And so I was listening to it a little bit. My baby was born Thursday, and then Friday the actual album came out. So you just have to understand the head state that I was in while I was listening to this. I was as happy as I could be. I was super stressed. And I was just walking around hospital hallways, going down to the cafeteria, getting Debella's subs, very sale, stale Debella's subs from the hospital cafeteria. And I'm just sitting there like listening to this music. And, and the, the feeling that I had was just thankfulness because this is such a wonderful piece of art. And it's really nice to have these big moments in my life attached to great pieces of art. When my other daughter was born all the way back in 2007, that was right when In Rainbows by Radiohead had come out. It was before they released it officially, but after the Pay What You Will. And you know, we were listening to it all the time. You know, If you actually look on a different channel of mine, you can see me and my two-year-old son uh, singing the song Weird Fishes. It was all we listened to. And so when I think about In Rainbows, I think about my daughter being born. And those things are connected. And so my new daughter, every time I think about this time of her birth, I will also have this as the soundtrack. And much like in Rainbows, it is a startlingly good piece of art. Also, like in Rainbows, the cover itself is made by a good artist. Kita Savi is the name of the artist. It's quite interesting. It looks almost like it's like brush strokes turned into 3D objects put randomly. Almost looks like abstract expressionist art. And when I was thinking about how to approach this album, I realized I have to focus on one song. Very rarely does this happen. But when it does happen, it's one of the best things in music. And please tell me your, your experiences with this, okay? Sometimes I hear a song and I cannot get enough of it. Like, there's something about it that like, it's, it's like one of those weird like earworms from that Star Trek movie. Like, it just like goes into your ear and like gets stuck in your brain and like, I just think about it. I remember like I was sitting there sleeping on that uncomfortable couch with, you know, my brand new daughter and I was like trying to fall asleep in between the nurses coming in and I would just have this drum, I would just have, not drum beat, I would just have this song stuck in my head. I would just think about it, this beat, I would just have it go in my head just the entire time. The song is Daddy Kane the second track off this album. So I'm going to take the song Daddy Kane, I'm gonna kind of break it apart as an example of what makes this such a great and amazing album. What a great, true piece of art. When I think about this beat, 
I thought about it a lot. And I thought, what is it that I like so much? And I realized that this is going to sound weird, but it's almost like, and I don't think this is possible, but it's almost like Alchemist was thinking, what if I made a hip hop beat that sounded like a combination between two different French, French touch techno acts? What if EDM? What if I took an air beat and mixed it with Daft Punk? Somehow, you put that all together, that's what we have. So what is this song? So first of all, the, the beat, the music to this song is fairly simple. There's no chorus, there's no bridge. There's, it's just two parts of eight bars, but they're very extended bars. The first part is this super cool washed out beat with this nice high lead line with these washed out synthesizers in the back and kind of a funky drum machine way in the back. And then we get to the second part, which is like that air daft punk, little compressed synth ditty that ends. That sounds like the daft punk. And then the bass sounds like air bass. Dan, like I can't even describe how sick this second part is and the way it all comes together. Because we have this first part come in and it's all very filled. It's filled with these washed synthesizers and these washes and these waves. And then when the second part comes in, it doesn't come in on the one, okay? I'm talking about bars here. You know, bars are one, two, three, four, okay? That's what a bar is. And the thing is, what makes the second part that the Alchemist put together, and I'm putting this forward as a top five hip hop beat of freaking all time. I've listened to the song hundreds of times. I played it with my family. I played it in the car. I played it on my headphones. It was the first hip hop song that my daughter ever heard in her entire five day old life. Okay? So it's one, two, three, four, but it comes in on the two. So it's Danton, Danton, Danton. Denton, that little pause. And when it comes next to that other part, the high part with this like trillingly high synthesizer, it is just so beautiful, the way it all comes together. It, it, just the beat, just the alchemist part, just the alchemist part is just so unbelievable. And then at the end, he does the thing that he likes to do. It's what I call his Timbaland, his Timbits, you know, Timbaland, the, the great hip hop producer, would often put something at the end where he's just kind of like bragging, like, oh, by the way, I'm just going to do something that's just so cool you can't believe it, and I'll just throw it on at the end. He has this crazy laugh and then slows down his beat and then brings in another drum beat that you think, like, wait, was this playing the whole time? But it wasn't. And it's basically like the Paul Revere, Beastie Boys backwards drum beat underneath. And, like, you, you hear it and you, like, retroactively apply that drum beat to the rest of the song. What an amazing beat. I mean, really, just an absolute achievement in underground hip hop, in atmosphere, in just creating this, whatever this renaissance is, a lot of it is based on moving away from a couple things, moving away from whatever's happening in the mainstream. So we don't have to have, you know, we don't always, hip hop doesn't have to always follow the hottest thing. It doesn't have to all be drill, or all, all be trap, or all be shiny suits, whatever it is that's unpopular, right? But then also really just this emphasis on atmosphere at the expense of drums. So I've, I've been fascinated, okay? Like, you know, like I grew up on the Fat Boys and, and Curtis Blow and Big Daddy Kane. I'll talk about him in a second. You know, I grew up in the old school, you know? So like drums are the nature of hip hop. Hip hop without drums is like something is missing. And so when I'm hearing all these drumless beats, especially like in some of the Makami projects and on Donda, I just, I've been asking the question of my viewers, hey, what, what's the deal? And people tell me there's two people who are responsible for that. Guess who? The Alchemist and Rock Marciano. Those are the ones who are credited. So it really makes sense. This whole album is a masterclass in de-emphasizing drums and emphasizing atmosphere, and it really works with the rapping of Rock Marciano. And the crazy thing is about this song is for a song that I love so much that I listen to on repeat. <laughs> I was driving to Wegmans to, to pick up some stuff for the house because, you know, we're out of groceries. It's a grocery store. It's also called Wegner's. Uh, so we're, like, we're driving there, and, and I, I just, you know, 
I love my kids. You know, I have two teenage kids in addition to my daughter. And so I, I play this because my son loves hip hop. He went to the Kendrick show, all that. And, you know, he's like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then by the time we got out of the grocery store, he's like, can we listen to that again? <laughs> I'm like, that's it. That's this song. That's that brain invading song. Bam, 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 bam. I don't know if it's a sample. I don't know if he's playing it. I don't know where he comes from. I don't know how he does it. And, and so Mark Marciano, when he comes in on the beat, like when he comes in rapping, it's like he, it's like, it's like he wasn't even planning on it. Like he just starts just like leaning on the cane, like cane and drug drug game and big daddy cane, big daddy cane, whatever. Like, like what? Did, did did you know that you're rapping on a on like a rap track right now? Did you know you are hipping and hopping? But I guess that's also part of his style. He's just so cool, so unassuming. So again, I'm trying to use this song as an example, okay? And I provided a link to it, you know, so you can... I, I forgot to do... I'm so excited about this song, I usually point up there and tell you to listen to the song, but you, you saw the card, okay? So he just starts, and, and I want to take this, really break down his lyricism here as an example of what he does. And I think what he does that I see in a lot of this invisible renaissance rappers, rappers like Action Bronson, rappers like Mock Hami, something that I'm gonna call hot corny, <laughs> okay? Like, kind of corny, like playing with puns and homonyms. Homonyms are words that sound the same as something else, right? Like, they had the same sounds, but have two different spellings and two different meanings. It's kind of corny. But I'm using the term hot to imply that it's not actually corny. It's using the tools of corniness without being corny. What makes it not corny is that it's usually more inventive than typical corniness, and it's mixed in with a street sensibility, with a grimy crime drama feel, so that it doesn't actually end up being corny. But it does end up with it being fun. And this is a thing where I'm very curious. I'm very curious about the relationship between Makami, who also released an album this week. Hey, Invisible Renaissance, could you stop releasing albums? I'm, my school semester started and I've got a new baby. I don't have time to review all this stuff. <sighs> Keep it coming. Um, I am curious to know sort of like what is the, the flow between Rock Marciano and Makami because it seems that what I like about one is what I like about the other as well is that ability to, to deliver kind of goofy lines that make you smile and you think are fun but then are also grimy and cool. I, I guess the Wu-Tang did that a lot too now that I think about it. But that was more like goofy similes, you know, like Method Man's just constantly talking about movies, you know. So let's get to the lyrics here. Starts off right off with leaning on the cane like Kane in the drug game. I'm like Big Daddy Kane. <sighs> you know, like he's leaning on the cocaine, meaning he's like stamping it out. He's like extending the amount of cocaine that he has to sell more. I assume to turn into crack. I don't really know. I don't sell crack. I don't sell cocaine for that matter. Um, <laughs> but still, like playing around with this Kane and Kane drug game like Big Daddy Kane, a reference to a rapper who I will be talking about soon. That's the name of the, the whole song, Big Daddy Kane. But then later, like, let, let me give you a good example of the kind of this haute corniness, okay? High corny. Haute is just a fr fancy French word for high. For haute, I mean for, like, high. Sorry, I'm too excited. I need to chill out for a second. This song really gets me excited. Okay. I got 44 bulldogs, you ain't got a dog in the fight. So many cardies, whore thought I was cross-eyed. I don't get that line. You're better off just letting the sleeping dogs lie. Thought he was on that lie. What's he tweaking off? So like lie is that like agent that's often used to straighten hair, but I suppose it's also used in drugs. And so he's using lie, L-Y-E, with sleeping dogs lie. And then he's talking about 44 bulldogs. I assume that means like bullets, you ain't got a dog in the fight, so he's like playing with dogs and he's playing with lie and sleep and lie, and it all just kind of mixes together into this kind of funny, interesting, uh, mixed up, just all these weird metaphors and homonyms end up getting all mixed up. But it's so cool that it's not actually corny. Also, later on in the song is a great example of what I think is some of his, he has a maturity to him, uh, which, you know, who am I to say? I'm just some dude, you know. But he has a maturity to him, which I think is really impressive and interesting. You don't hear a lot in hip-hop. 
like this line. And you ain't a boss until you take a loss. Like, thank you, you know? Like people who talk about never losing, Jay-Z as an example, you know, okay, like I will not lose. Okay, fine, but Jay-Z became more interesting when he started talking about his losses. I mean, okay, his losses were not buying a, a, a building in, in Brooklyn or something, Dumbo, you know, but, but still, you know, like there's a human nature and it really is true. You're not a leader, you're not a boss until you lose. How you respond to losing is what actually makes you a leader, is what makes you a boss, not just when you're winning. Anybody can win, very few people can lose and then recover. So he's dropping this real piece of wisdom. You ain't a boss till you take a loss. And then he goes on one of these hot corny things. That's a lost leader. But that's a loss leader. Lost leader, lost leader. I can't tell what he's saying. Lost leader is a business term for when you sell something intentionally at a loss to get business that will help out in the long run by encouraging people to purchase from you in the first place. That's a lost leader. Picked off your leader, blood. I heard he lost a leader. <laughs> Telling you, this is really cool. This is cool, hot, corny stuff. Because here he's talking about you're a, on a boss till you take a loss, your loss leader. Picked off your leader. So here he's saying he's taking out someone else's leader and then calls him a familial term you know, that's often used in African-American vernacular English for a friend or for somebody, blood. I don't think he's meaning in a gang sense here, just like especially in the 70s. Uh, often uh, it would just be common to call each other blood. Picked off your leader, blood. I heard he lost a leader. Here's that homonym where we have the word leader with a D and leecher, L-I-T-E-R, meaning killed your leader. He lost a liter of blood. Leader, leader, pumpkin eater, okay? All these fun homonyms, it's cool, it's street, and it works. It's, it's a beautiful mixture because he has that, that low growl, that atmosphere growl that alchemists, I mean, I don't know, alchemist works with everybody, right? I mean, alchemist worked with Kendrick, alchemist works with anybody. Anybody he works with, he can make sound good. Um, but it's great here too because then we have the second half of the song. So we have the sort of a little bit more serious but slightly funny uh, Rock Marciano, and then we get the always funny and interesting Action Bronson. His voice is just perfect here. Um, again, just he always works well, The Alchemist, and just some of his great lyrics. Classic battle like eagle versus snake, dragon versus leopard. <laughs> dragon. You know, like he's able to come up with these, these weird images that make you imagine a dragon fighting a leopard. And then he very conveniently talks about his own birth. So there I am in the hospital with my newborn and here he is talking about his birth. I arrived on the second day of December with The Wind Cries Mary played by Jimmy on the Fender. A reference to the song Wind Cries Mary, which coincidentally is my wife's favorite Jimi Hendrix song. So what did I do after listening to this song, after this was the first song that my daughter ever, first hip hop song my daughter ever listened to, I then put on the song Wind Cries Mary by Jimi Hendrix. So it's this really nice moment because, you know, he's talking about his birth in the context of music. He's, he's musically contextualizing his own birth. And just by chance, it happened to be the moment when I was musically contextualizing the birth of my own daughter. And then he ends it with just more of his fun action, Bronson, cool stuff. Dr. Baklava, I beg your pardon. Nowadays, your boy looking like a mother F and stegosaurus. I don't know. He's just funny. So there's that song. Please tell me. Oh, smash the like bucket. You see that like bucket down there? Smash it. Subscribe to my channel. I want to get to 50,000 subscribers so that I can say that I have that many. Uh, comment? Comment. Tell me. What are those songs? Like, what are those songs in your life that you just get obsessed with? Like, you just cannot listen to them enough. Like, it's, they become like a drug, you know? Like, you just, like, I have to listen to this song. You know? What are those songs? Tell me that in the comments, all right? And I just want to take a little bit of time because I do also think that part of this invisible renaissance is an acknowledgement of the past, is a conscious effort to try to maintain the history of hip hop. So if he has a song called Daddy Kane, and later on in the album, the final track on the album, he directly references Big Daddy Kane, let's talk about Big Daddy Kane. 
one of the, you know, people don't speak about him in the same breaths that they do Rakim. But they probably should. He had an amazing influence on the way hip hop lines were delivered. Now, personally, I was never a huge Big Daddy Kane fan because also he was basically the person who figured out how to merge R&B and hip hop. And I've had a rough relationship with that merge my entire life. But I will say that I've always really liked the collaboration between Big Daddy Kane and one of my all-time favorite MCs, Biz Marquee. So just here's a little hip hop lesson for you, okay? Maybe you know all this, maybe you don't. This is Biz Marquis' first album, Going Off. If you don't own this album, I don't know what to tell you, bud. This is a great album. And, and this is one of my favorite albums growing up because it was funny and interesting. And it's funny because actually Big Daddy Kane wrote most of the funny lyrics on songs like Pickin' Boogers. Like that was written by him. Albie Square Mall. My brother went to the Pratt Institute in, in uh, Brooklyn and he actually took me to the Albie Square Mall. I got to go shopping. It was very exciting. So, well, this is my homework for you, okay? You should listen to the song Just Rhymin' With The Biz. And I think this will help you to have a better understanding of hip hop music in the 80s and of old school music and how it influences. And it's great because in a way, I think it echoes really nicely this song, Daddy Kane, where you have the kind of serious guy, Rock Marciano or Big Daddy Kane, and then the kind of goofy, fun-loving guy, Action Bronson or Biz Marquis. Both of them really enjoy eating, right? So just, here, have a listen, okay? Go listen to the song. First of all, you're going to hear Biz Marquis say, Funky, which has been sampled 350 times, according to whosampled.com, okay? And this is the best of both. We have the goofy Biz Marquis, who's just known for basically freestyling, when I run for preds, you best be a voter, once knew a girl by the name of Rhoda, I watched Star Wars just to see Yoda, or R2-D2, driving down the BQ, when I buy Franks, I make sure they're Hebrew. It will be a reference to buying Frank Furters later in this episode, you know? So all these funny, like, weird Star Wars lines just goofing around. And then Daddy, Big Daddy King comes on. And if you listen to it, you really will hear the evolution of hip-hop cadences and delivery. Listen close. This is for your own concern. Let me show you exactly how it's properly done. Lights, camera, action, rap pro, do a show, good to go also. Ke cameo, afro, virgo, domino, I go Rambo, gigolo, Romeo, Friday night, spend money on a hotel to get a good night's sleep. I'm keeping in step. Now do I come off? Yep. Like that rapid fire, super funny, clever, enjambment with the word hotel, you know, making it seem a little bit there. Just, this is, this is very revolutionary. And it's funny because I really see the connection with him and Rock Marciano. Because also Big Daddy Kane is oddly soft-spoken while also being really braggadocious. There's a funny kind of mixture between them. So I think this is intentional. I think Rock Marciano is telling you to listen to Big Daddy Kane. So I'm, I, I've been doing that this week. I've been revisiting. I still, his first two albums are still great. Little too much singing for my taste. But you know what? There's a little too much singing to my taste on this album as well. TJ Swan, sometimes I just want him to just go away. So let me go through the rest of the album a little bit quicker. I hate to leave, I hate to leave Daddy Kane as a song, but fortunately the rest of the album is almost as good. The opening track is called Rubber Hand Grip. Uh, opening songs like these bells and ominous low bass sounds, some sci-fi sounds, a little bit of scratches, almost sounds like a like a part of like a 70s TV show. Some kind of interesting, clever raps. Uh, like you confused MJ with Weird Al Yankovic. I think this is on purpose, right? Because the, the, the term elephant man's bones, when you say the word elephant man's bones, there's a chance if you're under the age of 35, you don't think of the same thing that everybody with the age over 35 thinks of. When you say elephant man's bones, the first thing, most people think of is Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, sorry, my plants over here, I keep hitting this bird of paradise. So if you hear the sound, that's the sound of me being too animated and hitting a plant. I love my wife, but she just loves plants so much. You think of Michael Jackson because allegedly Michael Jackson wanted to buy the elephant man's bones because he was moved by the movie Elephant Man and he just likes the idea of Elephant Man's quote, I am not an animal, I am a human being, something like that. You know, I am not an animal, okay. 
And then let's let's go into some more of this good example of the haute cornballness of Rock Marciano. Trying to be Hollywood, forgot they even knocked out Suge, okay, meaning Suge Knight. The witch made a magic wand out of Hollywood. So he's rhyming Hollywood with Hollywood. Gotta keep a shoddy nearby where you do potty or do karate good. If not, you should not be in the hood. Okay, like, this is a great, this is great. You know, using shoddy instead of shotgun, so he's rhyming with holly and holly and shoddy. And then instead of saying near the toilet, shoddy near the potty or do karate good. Just, just, he's playing with words, he's having fun. It's goofy, it's serious, it's street, but he's also rhyming holly shoddy potty and karate that's fun next song is the stamp daddy kane then the song deja vu okay i'm not sure who it is that's opening up this song uh, i i believe it is lou rawls i believe um he has a very distinctive voice i think that's him talking but i can't quite tell um and then it ends with Miles Davis. Now the thing about, all, all the way throughout this album, there's an amazing thing that Alchemist is able to do of integrating random sounds from you don't know where. And this is just something that is great about hip hop. It gives you lessons, it, it sends you on, on quests to figure things out. You hear little samples, you wanna know what they are. I often talk about Public Enemy doing this particularly well. The opening lines to, to uh, welcome to the Terror Dome, just always say in my head, would you join me please in welcoming, just all these little things here. So there's a lot of interesting quotes and samples, but the thing that connects all these is that they're not random. They're all based around the concept of creation. So this song, Deja Vu, is all about creation. So the opening is who I think is Lou Rawls, could be someone else talking about how he was blessed with rhythm, and then goes on to talk about how God created the earth, and the same thing that created a tree created me. So it's about God's creation. But then it ends with, I believe, Miles Davis, I think I can recognize his voice, talking about, you know, to create, you have to become selfish. So talking about the selfishness of the creative process, which I think is very tied into these two very creative rap artists making this album. And then the actual very, very end is some rap producer, I can't figure out who it is, I almost recognize the voice, you can tell me in the comments if you want, talking about how he makes beats and just saying, this is easy. <laughs> you know, just saying making hip hop beats is easy. So in, when we take it all together, it's very clear that the entire song is about creation, about how God created the earth and human beings create music and how very good human beings, the best human beings, make the best hip hop like Alchemist and Rock Marciano. The music here has this cool like piano, like attack sound going up a scale. And every once in a while we had this weird, I can see soul sample coming in. Basically it's drumless. I mean, sometimes there might be some drums way in the background, but you, you can't dance to it. Um, sometimes it sort of flanges out with some weird like sci-fi and water sounds. Again, Rock Marciano just starts rapping unexpectedly. Um, and then we get, just check it out, right? Check out my point here. So the whole, the, the beginning and the end are about creativity. And then here are some lyrics from Rock Marciano. I made God out of my likeness. Pardon my niceness. For me to line you, don't need a barber's license, might click off your light switch, but my heart is righteous. You know, so he's talking about like he created God. So the song goes from God creates man, man creates hip hop to man who creates hip hop creates God. It's awesome, you know? I mean, that's bragging. There's, there's, you know, there's bragging like I got a Marcielago and I got a car and I got jewels and I got a watch and I got Odemar and Patek Philippe and all these other things. But I created God. You know, you're not going to do better than that. You're not going to get a better flex than creating God. Now this actually segues really nicely into the next song, which is also about hip hop creativity, Quantum Leap. It has a very cool, I use the word underwater quite a bit for the, for the sounds of everything, but it's just because atmosphere is up front here. Atmosphere before rhythm. That really is what's happening here. Uh, there's a cool drum here, but like smoky synthesizers and this weird like muted horn hits, just a great atmosphere. Sometimes these cascading synthesizers in the back. And then all the lyrics are, are around this concept of him being a very creative and good rapper. 
opens up with the lines, your favorite rapper writes me fan mail. And then later he says how you couldn't possibly have taken another Quantum Leap. So Quantum Leap, the TV show starring Scott Bakula and Ross Tamblin? Who else was in Quantum Leap? I don't remember. You know, but a Quantum Leap is a general expression for taking a big step forward. I don't know. Did Rock Marciano take a Quantum Leap? I've never listened to anything else by Rock Marciano. And all you hip-hop guys are so pissed at me and I don't blame you. Because this is awesome. So you're super pissed at me right now and that's okay. You can tell me what to listen to. Go for it. Um, I don't know if he took a leap forward, but I love this idea. Like, how could he possibly go further? Um, and then more just kind of like funny, courty, cool lines like Bada Bentley and then Fosworth Bentley, like rhymes the word Bentley with Bentley. Um, but then again, he's capable of doing that kind of corny stuff. But then all the way throughout the album, at times there'll be these little piercing moments of personal perspective. I seen a lot as a child. I was traumatized. And then here, Alchemist brings in the way back some sample. It might be James Brown. I can't figure out who it is saying, help me. Let's take that all in context. I seen a lot as a child. I was traumatized. Help me. All right. I often talk about how hip hop is this great, wonderful art and rap music is this great, wonderful thing. But in a lot of ways, its primary subject is black trauma, right? And that's one of its great subjects and some of the ambiguity that people have about loving hip hop is that it's monetizing uh, black trauma for the enjoyment of people and for the benefit primarily of... Anyways, it doesn't really matter except to say that's what he's talking about here, like the nature of hip hop. I seen a lot as a child. I was traumatized. Now it's monetized. They swore I had uh, Masonic ties, but my eyes... On Whoa. My eyes don't recognize anything when I'm... Sorry, I got all blurry. Uh, it's monetized. I swear I had Masonic ties, but my eyes only recognize dollar signs. So basically, he's desensitized. He's traumatized. Help me! And all I can recognize is money. Beautifully mixed together. Subtle and gorgeous. Next song is the title track, Elephant Man's Bones. I am not an animal. This beautiful, like, jazz singer singing... All the sunlit days, all the Sunday days, all the... S I can't figure out what she's saying. <laughs> Where have they gone? And this beautiful piano, playing so much piano in this song. Hey, Sky. Yeah. You gotta mention at some point that piano is percussion. I know. Piano is a percussion instrument. Technically, piano is a percussion instrument. And that's really how it's used here. Um, very kind of spiritual song. Uh, the way that this jazz music sounds it sounds spiritual and then his rapping which is so low you can barely hear it says this is the food of the spirit i this is my introduction to rock marciano and i'm loving it because what a fat like this is the food for the spirit this is food for the spirit are you the same guy who was talking about bulldogs and having a shoddy by the potty you know he could have said have a shoddy by your squatty potty it's okay the food is for the spirit. The music is endearing. I am sharing a human experience. Th those are his lyrics. I am sharing a human experience. Thank you, Rock. That's what I'm trying to tell you all. <laughs> That's what I keep trying to say about why hip hop is so great. These are people trying to share a human experience. Sometimes it's hard to get through the layers of bravado and, as FD Signifier would say, kayfabe and performance and affectation and slang but they're trying to share a human experience the same way that tom york was within rainbows the same way that everybody is when they're making art he's sharing a human experience and then he comes up with one of those just great corny wonderful lines came up on dudes like a balloon filled with helium funny and later, another funny line, takes a village to raise a kid, but it can still produce an idiot. What I like about that is, is he's playing with, he's playing with cliche. So the word village has two cliches attached to it. It takes a village to raise a child and the village idiot. So he doesn't have to repeat the word village because it's implied that when you hear the word idiot, you're also hearing the word village. He's really doing some pretty sophisticated stuff here. And then later at this song, he does this whole thing where he talks about his own sense of worthlessness. And this is... Another point that I like talking about, about what makes rap such great music, 
is because it's so filled with with self love. It's much more overt about the, the 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 hypocrisy, about the contradiction, the paradox of human existence, where you feel great about yourself, but you also feel like you're nothing at the same time. Right? That's just that's the human condition. If you want to read a 17th century French philosopher, read some Blaise Pascal. He'll describe it to you. I talk about him all the time. P A S C A L. Um, look up his stuff on diversion. It's quite interesting. But we had this sense of worthlessness. And we all feel it. And, and you know, the, the people who brag the most are the most insecure, right? That's just the way it is. So hip hop brags the most. And in the last, well, recently, I don't know, decade or so, rappers are finally starting to get in touch with that worthlessness that's underneath, okay? Like they're getting to a point of emotional honesty. And this is where I think hip hop is evolving into something that's actually more useful to the people that are making it. No longer is it just performing black trauma for the benefit of a primarily white audience. It's performing black trauma while also addressing the result of that trauma in a more reflective way, which might actually lead to healing. All right, but that's the goal. Our goal is to have hip hop with no black trauma in it because hopefully there will be no more black trauma, no more white, no more trauma for anybody, okay? But that's the, the subject of, of, of hip hop quite often. Can't trust no B word. She's just, uh, she's just trying to bang a favorite musician like I got no feelings. So here we have the problem of groupies who treat artists not like people. They are just things. They are being used. This is inverting what we usually think of of a musician using a groupie. Instead, it's the groupie using the musician, not seeing her humanity. Why is this album called Elephant Man's Bones? I think because Elephant Man is not an animal. He is a human. I forget the quote from Elephant Man, but it's something like, I am not an animal. Okay, so it's something like that, right? He was perceived of as an animal. That's why Michael Jackson liked him so much, because Michael Jackson was not humanized either. He was not treated like a human being, okay? So it's like we are all howling, every human being on planet Earth is howling at the rest of the world to be recognized as a human being. Some people have it easier than others. Some people are recognized as a human being with little difficulty. Others are not. And here he is describing partly his life as an African American growing up in a country riddled with systematic oppression and racism, and others is the, the, the dehumanization of fame. In that way, I think we could actually put this song and this album in the company of Billie Eilish's last album. I know. What do they have in common? They're talking about this feeling of like, she's got feelings. He's got feelings. Just because you love me doesn't mean you treat me as a human being. Right? The, right? That's what artists are trying to tell us. Got wounds, not even a doctor could heal. I'm ashamed, mama. I'm hiding from the mirror. Wow. I'm hiding from the mirror. Again, going back to Pascal, Blaise Pascal, P-A-S-C-A-L, he talks a lot about the pain that people feel. Why is it that human beings cannot sit alone in a room? Why do we need to distract ourselves all the time with money and wars and conversation? And Because we can't just sit with ourselves because we start to hate ourselves. And that's what he's talking about here. Like, I can't distract myself with these women. They don't treat me like I have feelings. I've got wounds that cannot heal. I'm hiding from the mirror like a vampire, my N-word. But I ain't got forever to correct all my errors. Every once in a while, I get actual goosebumps. Those are actual goosebumps on my actual arm from this lyric. I can't get it to I'm the stupid camera. Because vampires live forever. So he can't see himself in the mirror like a vampire. Simple, one of those examples, of just kind of a corny, funny line. Okay. But vampires live forever. So they can correct their errors over eternity. But he is mortal. Which is the whole point that Blaise Pascal, 17th century French philosopher, was getting into. He was explaining, it's actually our death that makes us so miserable. It's our death that we're trying to get away from, that we're trying not to think about. And not only are we going to die, but we're unable to fix our errors. That's what's in this song, okay? That's what's in here. 
And then another one of these great Timbaland style outros where everything just changes, that's weird. It's a big job for the sun. I do right well at it too, where Mr. Sunshine comes in here and then this beat just gets like really like sloppy and twisted with just saying sunshine. And then the birds that you heard in the beginning come back. What an amazing opening to the album. I think the only, like there's a couple, there's a couple points in the album that are not 10 out of 10s. And I would say, and I don't, I don't rate, but if this is your first time viewing my videos, by the way, I don't give anything ratings. But what I'm saying is, if there's maybe one step down for this album, it's with this next track, Bubble Bath. Um, it, it's just got this like drum beat that's way too forward. And it's basically playing the, the rhythm to the Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. And it's cool, you know, it's got this kind of trilling xylophone, but it doesn't quite live up to the rest. I do wonder if this isn't a reference to the song Splish Splash by Cappadonna, just a great old uh, Wu-Tang affiliate, uh, 99 I think it is. Cool. Uh, one thing for the production I love here though is that there is bass, <laughs> but it's just at the beginning of like the verse and then it comes through like maybe one more time. And really the bass on this song is the bass drum of the doom, 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 um, Funny, cool, amusing lyrics. Took it to trial, beat it like Amistad. So, you know, Amistad is that Steven Spielberg movie about the slaves who overcame their masters and ended up going on trial and ended up beating the case in, the, in, in uh, Massachusetts. Uh, and then a, a truly funny line. Ask my top five, bet I reply me five times like Dylan. Now, you might not know why does he pronounce it like Dylan and it should be Dylan. It's a reference to a Dave Chappelle sketch where he plays Puff Daddy and this other rapper named Dylan. And in that, he says, people ask me my top five. I say Dylan, 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 because I spit hot fire. It's quite funny. Um, and then the outro has this cool echoes going on. Next song is Liquid Coke. Um, really nice kind of just this intro, like people shouting, Marcy, Marcy, like it doesn't sound like the rest is totally separate from the rest of the beat. And then we hear someone say, okay, okay, okay. And then we hear the sound of a slit. And I think that's the sound of, of a movie of someone saying, okay, 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 okay. And then having their, their throat slit because the opening lyrics to the song, bleed liquid coke when I slit your throat. Uh, just all over these kind of swirling keyboard sounds. I don't know where they come from. Again, more interesting personal lyrics here. Why in school you ain't learned social cues. Excuse me if I'm opening wounds. Expensive clothes won't soothe. All this ice won't remove my bruise. Okay? All this, right? Going back to that same theme in the last song. Or whatever. Not last song, but Elephant Man's Bones. You know, like, you cannot heal yourself with stuff. I created this lane. If you're hating, then eat a frank. I told you hot dogs would come back, Bismarcky, and now this. And then he kind of sings this outro, and this is where I wonder, you know, because this reminds me a lot of what I like about Makami, where he'll often just do little singing bits, and it's not, not like he's a great singer, but it has this cool, kind of menacing, catchy style. Is Does Mach copy Rock? Does Rock copy Mach? Or does Rock and Mach come up with the same thing together at the same time? I don't know. You can tell me. I'm the professor but I learn from my auditors. Next song is called Trillion Cut. This crazy high droning sound of, I think it's a flute. The beat basically doesn't start here. The piano really provides the rhythm. There's just a little hi-hat, but it's just this piano. Dun, 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 dun. Starts off with Boldy James, um, who I like. I like him when he works with, with Alchemist. I like him a fair amount, um, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I actually want him on this project. I, I don't know. He's fine, but it doesn't, it doesn't like draw me in the way the rest of the guest appearances do. It is interesting, he talks about thousand grams, cut with morphine, that's my current mood. And then Rock Marciano starts with cutting the product with fentanyl. Um, I've talked about this a couple times, but I just wanna mention something. Because I know people who have died um, from fentanyl, and whenever I hear people rap about fentanyl, I get upset, and I, like I feel kind of wounded and traumatized. Um, and it makes me realize <laughs> uh, the, the, the weirdness 
of, oh, you know, it reminds me of how weird it is that I just sit here and I consume black drama, which is a lot of what it is listening to hip hop and hearing tales about heroin and the crack epidemic and the crack epidemic and the crack epidemic. And like the one time it actually touches on me, I'm like, ew, I don't want to hear about fentanyl. And I realize, um, I mean, the, the privilege, obviously, the privilege that I've grown up with to not have to think about the crack epidemic, except in abstract. Um, but just, it, it's an interesting thing that, like, I, I do wonder what it must be like to listen to this music if you have lived through the crack epidemic and if it has touched you in a personal way. Is it even possible to listen to this music without just being hurt, without it just reminding you of that pain? Um, but this whole thing, I think it's intentional, you know, because you know, obviously, you know, lacing things with fentanyl is... You know, like, you, like you're just, you're guaranteeing that you're going to kill somebody, right? Like, like, like cutting drugs with other drugs, it's never, you know, good for the consumer. But if, if you're, if you're, if you're lacing things with fentanyl, you are 100% going to kill somebody no matter what. So it is a weirdly more heartless thing, but this whole song is about heartlessness, outcast i didn't give my family a hug they say home is where the heart is but where's your home when you're heartless right so it's about being heartless so it makes sense that it starts off with this fentanyl line true story um i i uh you know so i i like having a nice home for my kids you know and they come from a broken home you know divorced and all that. And, uh, and so I, I talked to my therapist and my therapist once said, you know what kids really want? They just want to feel like home is where the heart is. And, and they just want like, they just want like milk and cookies when they come home from school. You know, they want that feeling. So from that day on, I started making milk and cookies for my kids when they came home. Like literally, like I wasn't like, like he was speaking metaphorically. I did it literally. And then I made a little sign, a cheesy sign that said home is where the heart is. Like I did it because I just want them to know this is a home. So my daughter took a post-it note and wrote the word F and covered up the H-E. So I just said home is where the fart is, which is also true. Uh, later line in the song, he says, my pops had tracks in his arms from Heron. This is rap meets Gil Scott Heron. Another good example of kind of haute corniness, rhyming heroin with Heron, and when heroin is often pronounced Heron. Um, I don't think you can say this is rap meets Gil Scott Heron when Gil Scott Heron is one of the progenitors, you know, one of the prehistory of rap figures. Like, Gil Scott Heron is the Gil Scott Heron meets rap. But that's fine. Next song is called Horn of Abraxas. I spent way too much time trying to figure out what Abraxas is. It's basically this sort of Greek, esoteric, semi-cult, semi-religion. The belief that salvation comes through esoteric knowledge. I'm going to leave the title away. If you want to tell me what the title means, you go right ahead. Okay? Tell me in the comments after you like the Smash Bucket. Opens up with a story from Ice-T. Um, I've been getting into, I'm preparing a class I'm going to be teaching in the spring on the history of hip-hop, so I've been kind of uh, finding good resources. There's some interesting stuff about how interesting, how in, instrumental Ice-T was in, in all of early uh, West Coast hip-hop, but this is like a story that he's telling. Um, I did a video about Ice-T, about how weird it is that he's doing all these commercials for Cheerios, because when I grew up, he was the most dangerous man in America. <laughs> he was the guy that released Cop Killer. He was the guy that everybody hated and said was the most, you know, he was the face of, of the black America that scares white America. And now he's all on CSU or CSI, whatever, and it's on Cheerios, boxes, Coach T. It's a funny thing. I, I did a video about it. It's it's private. I'll include a link to it in the description if you want to see it. I make some mistakes in the video. It's not my best work. But I just sort of talk about the weirdness of seeing villains, cultural villains becoming cultural good guys and really sort of being whitewashed. So it's nice hearing Ice being reminded of how great Ice T's voice is as he's telling this story. Um, here we actually have like a drum beat, but it's like the jazzy drum beat starting. It, this whole, much like a lot of this album, it feels like a song never really gets started. These splashing cymbals, these organs cutting in and cutting out. Another song that's kind of mean. It's tied into that again. Where Rock, Rock Marciano is kind of mean. I fantasize about infanticide. Do, do, that's the last word you want to hear when you just have a baby. 
I didn't listen. I usually skip the song because I don't want to hear the word infanticide when I'm holding a, a, a five-hour-old baby. Uh, standing over your dead parents, fanning flies. I don't want to think about that either. Uh, but then goes on to the cardiologist can't hear my heart. So the previous song and this song taken together, we have a duo of songs about being heartless, which makes sense. And then uh, he comes back and Ice-T comes back and talks about finding a dead body. Who knows? Next song is J.J. Flash, with cool, gentle soul sample. These, these guitar finding these notes and these random like horn blasts, some weird movie sounds in the back. Um, references Malcolm X, West Indian Archie, and then talks about his lack of love in his life. His first plug was his first love. An outro talking about how hard it is to be a pimp. Again, like a fine song. This appears to be not a reference to the Rolling Stones song, Jumping Jack Flash, but a reference to the Whoopi Goldberg movie, Jumping Jack Flash, which uh, if you grew up in the 80s like I did, that image of her jumping up, uh, that's like, that image is burned in my head. Zigzag Zig, it's these beautiful guitar sounds here, kind of languid with like nice underwater sounds in the beginning and then it settles into this really nice drum beat here finally we have a drum beat up front with a nice descending piano um the thing about alchemist is he just constructs really sound beats like they even though he is so prolific his quantity is so high his quality is so high just great atmosphere cool sounds and this weird singing he talks about his life being a fantasy a little bit of odds with the rest um <laughs> I, okay let's talk some more stuff about it, his lyricism rap the foreign rap like water it's formless water is formless okay yeah yeah water's formless okay yep yep yeah, yeah. So your rap is formless like water. Yeah, because your rap is kind of formless. That is actually a good description. You have a kind of liquid style and you're describing your own rap as water. And it works. Dude! <laughs> you're doing my job for me, Mr. Marciano. Formless. Formless, without the drums, without the typical cadence, atmosphere. Yeah, we still drag in Minx to crashing vehicles, the regal break, the glass in the cathedral, squeeze the desert eagle like Kegels. Did you just rhyme a popular street, a popular gun, the desert eagle, with a pelvic floor exercise, which is done primarily by pregnant women or by women who want to tighten their their pelvic floor or by men who just you know you can do a kegel right now in case you didn't know like it's where you it's like, a, like where you kind of like make your butthole like go in and out you know what i mean that's a kegel that's what that's called there's a name for it okay you're laughing because i just i just did that and i talked about buttholes it's funny but that's what a kegel is this dude just rhymed desert eagle with kegel who who knows what is the percentage of people who would talk about a desert eagle who also know what a kegel is? All right? I don't know. But Rock Marciano is one of those guys. Uh, I defy gravity higher than a giraffe's pussy. <laughs> Dracula bit me. I didn't bleed. I love this because he does all these things where he ties these songs together. I feel like this is tied into that vampire line, but then also Dracula bit me and didn't bleed. Again, like I keep on talking about old school hip hop, and that's part of what this renaissance is like because renaissance is a rebirth, right? So this invisible renaissance is kind of a rebirth, a lot of the cool stuff from old school hip hop. Like old school hip hop is goofy, you know, it is. It's like, like how many songs in early hip hop are about Superman? Like there's so many songs about Superman. <laughs> Just because that song came, that movie came out in 79. And, you know, 79, you know, it's when, when uh, Rapper's Delight comes out. That's when rappers started to really record stuff, you know. So it kind of makes sense. You know? And then he sings in the end about this whole, his life is a fantasy, even though obviously it really isn't. Um, then we get to the song Stigmata, really high sampled voice, kind of a smoky lounge organ, drums really far in the back. Atmosphere, not much else. Um... You know, I've been inspiring these donkeys for a mother effing decade straight. He has been inspiring these donkeys. Um, I, I want to spend a little bit of time with his rhyme work. 
So he has a whole beginning here where he rhymes everything with an M. Fix your act, kid. I'm a handyman. Apparently, I'm mechanically advanced. Minus the hand transplants. At the first glance, my thought was my, they thought my band was Duran Duran. But why rant? What man could check me? I'm like Durant. Okay, so just really interesting play with man, hand, transplants, advanced, glance, band, Duran Duran, rant, Duran. <laughs> I'm, I'm losing my mind. 55 minutes. Whoa! Are you still watching? Dude, you got to subscribe if you're still watching. I've got tons of videos like this where I just talk about stuff for like an hour. But just an interesting run. And later he goes on a sort of uh, Udi line where he just rhymes with Udi. Like two teens playing Calls of Duty, but all these real toolies. When you have true inner beauty, no man can remove your jewelry. Denim 2G's goofy. These ain't nudie jeans. My dookie don't even stink. <laughs> So what I like about this is, you know, he's talking about Call of Duty, these real toolies. Again, he's used, it's sort of like how he used the term shoddy earlier. Like he's not afraid to use slang that's outmoded, right? Like toolie for a gun. I haven't heard that used in hip hop long time. Way before this guy was influencing donkeys, okay? But two, two, two teens playing Call of Duty, these real toolies. And then he talks about when you have inner beauty, no man can move your jewelry. He's going back to these previous lines about how ice cannot, cannot cure his trauma. But this is the opposite. When you're truly beautiful, you cannot be robbed. The makeup does not come off, okay? And then my dookie don't even stink. He's also really not afraid to use interior rhymes, but then just leave it with interior rhymes. So he's hearing, he has all this duty, tooly, beauty, jewelry, 2G's goofy, nudies, dookie, stink. My dookie doesn't stink, all right? Like it's, he's not afraid to like break out of it and it creates that kind of release because you're hearing, just like with the Durant, ant, 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 Durant, Durant, he's able to just provide some kind of release with my dookie don't even stink. Dookie, very under, underrated word for poop. 57 minutes. I, I've talked about a lot of things here. Zip guns, kind of a sci-fi beat, zoop zip sounds, very funky drum beats, sparse piano drum trails, another droning high sound like the song previously. Uh, he actually says where the drum's at. Mark Marciano says that. Um, cuts out, comes back. Uh, more of this kind of corny, <laughs> cool corniness. He rhymes may back with no, no, he, he calls a, a Maybach a my back, so he can then say that they stabbed me in my back. And this reminds me a lot of Lil Wayne. Help me. Help your professor here. As far as I understand, the technique of mispronouncing something to create a funny rhyme or a funny homonym was Lil Wayne's invention. The one I always think about is... is um, from Barry Bonds on the Kanye album. Uh, once they make them, I will have them. Oops, I mean have them. My drink's still pinker than an Easter rabbit, right? So he uses have them to rhyme with Reagan. So like, anyways, I don't know, but I like it. Uh, and then uh, Knowledge the Pirate has another really strong verse. It's funny because he's also very kind of low key. Um, and then the album ends, or at least the version of the album that is available streaming. <laughs> the version that I listened to um, that was bootlegged has two other songs on it, but I'm not going to review those because I want to respect the fact that I shouldn't bootleg. Uh, think big. So I would like to, I'm just going to imagine something. I'm, imagine, I'm an A&R, okay? Al, chemist, Mr. Chemist, alchemist. I love this album, baby. It sounds great, but let's end let's end the album with just a big old beat, all right? I love this song, Think Big. You know, you got these sweet guitars that resolve and find themselves, and you have some drums in there, Al, Mr. Chemist. It's really quite good. It's just a minimal cymbal so sounds, you know? You do this whole thing where it sort of sounds like it never stops and never starts in this whole atmosphere. I love it, baby. It's great, baby. You gotta keep it going, but can you do one thing for me, Al? Mr. Chemist, can you just, can you just, could you just give me a real drum beat so we can go out on a nice strong thing? Can you just make a good strong beat? Do you have some ideas, Al, for a good strong drum beat? Seagulls.
What, 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 what do you mean? Little white seagulls, buddy. You know, ah! Se seagulls aren't a, a drum beat. They're not even a musical instrument. Seagulls. I, seagulls. That's how I imagined it went. Alchemist made a drum beat out of seagulls. <laughs> okay? Seagulls are his corn. I don't know how he did it. But it's the sound of seagulls at a beach being together and it just creates all this amazing atmosphere behind it. Because you know, there's a franticness to seagulls. And there's... Uh, referencing Big Daddy Kane again. Ain't no half-stepping like Big Daddy Kane. Stepped on the cane, now that's just bad yay. <laughs> so I... I don't know if this is referencing Kanye, saying that it's like just bad Kanye music or what it is. Big Daddy Kane bringing it back, tying this whole thing together. Uh, he does also raps about eating scallops and shrimp, which kind of ties together into the seagull feeling. And then the album ends with the lines, I'm channeling big without a spiritual medium. I cannot describe to you how much I like this lyric. He repeats it. He repeats this line. I am channeling big without a spiritual medium. It's not particularly profound, okay? He's talking about channeling the Notorious B.I.G. Right after this, we hear a quote from Notorious B.I.G. This reminds me a lot of how Tupac was used on To Pimp a Butterfly and kind of this conversation with the people who came before you. Okay, I understand that. Channeling Notorious B.I.G. isn't that big of a deal. And then the cool, corny line of a medium, a spiritual medium, is somebody who is able to contact the dead through a seance, okay? But then also, medium is a size and big is a size. So we have that joke in there, plus the serious thing of where he is channeling the Notorious B.I.G. His wordplay, his charisma, his excellence at hip-hop but there's something about the sibilance of these words together i'm channeling big without a spiritual medium i i can't i i can't tell you why i cannot tell you why this sounds so good this this part of the reason why i love being a language teacher because if you don't speak english as your first language you know uh it's probably hard to really appreciate just the poetry of this line. I am channeling big without a spiritual medium. Channeling big, like a long word, channeling big without a spiritual medium. Just a beautiful line. Very well delivered. And there you go. That is my review of the album, Elephant Man's Bones. These are my Patreons right here. They help me to buy music. I'm going to give a special shout out to a couple of people you see here. At Large Autour, Tatsu123, Nicholas Palacios. On my Patreon, I every once, in a while, every once in a while, every once in a while, I'll ask if people want shout outs. Anyone can ask. You can be a $3 donor. I'll say your name at the end of a video. I don't care. You know, not every video. You know, I, I can't read out all these people's names. That'd be laborious. Pun. Wife was in labor. Laborious. But, you know, these are the people who helped me do that. So just make sure you can read your name on there if you're one of these people. I've actually lost a couple of Patreons lately. So if you want to go to Patreon, some of these people actually I haven't paid in a little while, but <laughs> I'm too lazy to print out the thing. So, hey, another benefit of being a Patreon, sometimes you get credit when you aren't even giving me money anymore. All right. Well, until next time, I get to go listen to Makami and live more in this invisible renaissance. Please tell me more about what are your favorite songs that get stuck in your head. Tell me what I need to know about Rock Marciano. And feel free to congratulate me on being a dad again because it's wonderful. All right. There's the camera.